What's up, Kyle Gang? All right, so we got the statics problem here. So we're trying to find the horizontal and vertical components of the reaction at pin C. So if we're trying to find the reactions at pin C, well, let's go ahead and do it. So we, I drew this quick uh, force body diagram here. I also got the image on the screen. So if you want to find uh, at C, we need to draw the forces in our diagram, of course. So let's go ahead and draw it. So we have pins at A and C. That means that there's two forces acting each way. So we have A of Y, A of X, C of Y, C of X. So I just drew those in the positive directions. They might or may not go that way, and we're going to find out later. So if we're trying to find C of Y and C of X, how are we going to do that? So we can simplify this, basically. Of course, if we take the sum of the forces in the y, sum of the forces in the x, we have so many unknowns. We have four unknowns, and we only can have three equations in two dimensions. So this is not going to work out. So basically, we need to combine some of the forces to make them better. So what we're going to do is we're going to just look at this beam BC. If we just look at beam BC, it's going to become a lot simpler to do what we need to do. So let's redraw BC just by itself. So this is B, this is C, or so we're going to have C of Y, C of X, but then this AB, instead of it becoming A of Y and A of X, we, can, we know that it, this force that it puts on BC is just going to be perpendicular, or it's going to be directly where AB forces, so it's going to go just like this. This is force AB now, right? That's the force that AB exerts on BC. So we know the ratio of this triangle is 3, 4, 5. Do not need to put an F there. 3, 4, 5. Right? Because this triangle is 3, 4, 5. And then, so we also know that we have our 400 pound force and our 500 pound force. And then now we're left with this way easier force body diagram. Now we can, right? Now we only have three equations, or three unknowns and three equations. So now we can do this. <clears throat> so let's do that. So what we want to do now, uh, if we find force AB, then we can just take some of the forces in the Y and some of the forces in the X and find C of Y and C of X. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we want to find force AB, we probably want to take the moment around C. If we take the moment around C, then C of Y and C of X are not in the equation and we can solve for it. So some of the moments around C is equal to zero. And it's equal to, so the 500 pound force pushes downward, which is going to make us want to rotate counterclockwise. So it's going to be a positive 500 times its distance, which is 3 feet. Same with the 400, it's going to be a positive 400, and its distance is now 3 plus 3 feet, 6 feet. But then force AB is making it want to go uh, clockwise, so we're going to subtract that. So it's going to be minus force AB. But of course, force AB acts at an angle, so we want to find just the vertical part first. So the vertical part of force AB, we're going to take force AB and multiply it by 4 over 5. Yep. And then, of course, we need to multiply it by its distance, which is 9 feet. So if this is the vertical component, then what about the horizontal component? So the horizontal component is going to act here, but its distance in the y direction is going to be 0. And you can think about it, if you're pushing directly backwards towards C, it's not going to make a difference about spinning it around the moment. So this is our total equation here. So all we have to do, of course, is move force AB over, do these, and then multiply over. I'm going to trust you guys to do the math on this, and just to save time, we can say that um, force AB is equal to 542 pounds. So that's good and all. So now we can pretty easily solve for C of Y and C of X. So how do we find C of Y and C of X? Well, it's just going to be some of the forces thing. So let's go ahead and find C of X first. If we want to find C of X, well, let's do some of the forces in the X direction. All right, so some of the forces in the X direction is equal to zero, we're at equilibrium. So it's going to be force AB, that's pushing in the positive X direction, and we have to take the ratio. So it goes three over in the X direction for every five, so we're going to multiply it by three fifths. And then we're going to add C of X. So then you're going to find by multiplying or adding CX over that CX is equal to negative, and plugging force AB here, it's going to be equal to negative 325. So this negative number that we get tells us that C of X, we said that it's pointing to the right, but it's negative, so it's actually pointing to the left. So we drew a force body diagram wrong, but it's okay. So all you have to do is say, I know that C of X 
is equal to 325 pounds, but it's pointing to the left. So that's going to be useful. Oh, that one's useful. So we finally see why. That's the only thing we have left to find. Uh, we're going to find sum of forces in the y direction, obviously. So sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to 0. It's equal to force AB. Its ratio is 4 over 5 in the y direction. Minus 400 from the pounds pushing downward. Minus 500. And then plus C of Y. So then, of course, you do the math on this. Plug in force AB. And you're going to get that C of Y is equal to 467 pounds. And it's a positive number, so that means you know it's going to be pointing upward. So there you go. That's all the parts of this question. It's pretty simple. It's just about making the right cut and analyzing the diagram. So if you do enough of these problems, it's just going to be pattern recognition. It'll be really easy. So I'll see you in the next, guys. Um, I have a whole series of this, so please check that out if you're having any trouble. And I'll see you in the next one.